Hello, my name is George Moore, owner of Moore's Sewing Center in Southern California. This Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy series is a new series we started that describes a trifecta of creativity, which is a phrase I coined uh, when I put the Brother Stellaire series in combination with the scan and cut and the new print mode. This combination really unleashes the total creativity in embroidery applique, embroidery quilting, and everything to do with embroidery. And so let's give it to Kathy and she'll, you'll, you can tell how excited she is, but we'll come back and I'll tell you the special deals we have on the, these components. Thanks, George. I think I have a pretty cool project that uses all three items from the trifecta of creativity. It's a selfie phone bag because we all need a phone bag and we take lots of selfies. So what's the perfect combination? Something really cool to carry your phone in and you can show your photography skills on the outside pocket. So this is the selfie phone bag using the trifecta of creativity. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. Let's get started. Okay, so this selfie phone bag, I think it's pretty cool. Let's talk about the supplies that we need and get started. Now I have a now there's there's a there's a lot to this little bag. It's pretty easy, but there's supplies and all that kind of fun stuff. So I have a handout for this and all my other videos. So if you go to moreso.com slash shop, um, then you can find this this handout. Just go find sewing tech talk with Kathy. You can print it out and it gives you the step-by-step -step instructions, which is kind of helpful because you don't necessarily have to take notes, but you can always come back to the video to the video to see all the little details. So I wanted something that used that was so useful. And I use these little tiny purses all the time. They're perfect for just carrying in your phone, little essentials, and it doesn't weigh you down. And the embroidery machine, great for that process. <laughs> this is embroidery and a sewing machine. And now with the printer, I can print a cool selfie picture to go on the front. Now, I dare say this might be a gift that you could give. I don't know. It might appeal to a teenager. That's kind of dangerous territory to say, but it makes great gifts because all you have to do is collect the selfies and then you can move it on out. So, what are the supplies that we need? Well, the list is in your handout, but what we basically need is, I did a, I printed a picture out for the outside pocket. Now you can do two if you want to. I just did the one for this project and I did one here. That's the lake by where I live. So it's an autumn kind of handbag. And so that's the pocket that goes on the outside edge. We're gonna print that. Now what happens is you need to have a picture to print. And basically all you do is you open up the Art Spira app and the pictures that are on your cell phone, you bring those in and those can be printed out on the fabric. It's a pretty easy process. You go to the photos that are in your mobile device. When you bring them in, you can rotate them, resize them. Now this is done in the five by seven hoop. So basically it's a five by seven. So what we wanna do is we wanna get our picture to be about that. And you can mess around with editing the photo and all that kind of fun stuff. I have another video that goes into the print moda a little bit more deeply and all the different ways you can adjust a photo and print it on out. So check out that Sewing Tech Talk video because it goes a little bit more in depth <laughs> into those printings. But basically you take it, you rotate it, you size it, and you can do two at once. So you can do both sides of the bag or <laughs> make two separate bags and really just print out those two pockets at the same time. So having done that, what I did is then I took that photo and I cropped it with about a half inch, and I didn't crop it, I cut it out, and I put the plastic covering on the top of it. The plastic covering makes this fabric, well, it makes it shiny, but it also gives it water resistance, which is great on the, on the outside of a bag. And I trimmed it with one half inch seam allowance all the way around. What I did is I took the pocket lining and I sewed it to the top of the pocket and I folded it over and I just top stitched right on the top. Like I said, the instructions are in your handout, but this is the pocket that's going to go on the outside. Prepare that and you can set it aside. 
on the inside we'll need two lining pieces and on the inside of one I made a little pocket out of vinyl. Maybe you can put a credit card or a driver's license in there. And so I sewed that using my Ultra T foot because it slides right over the top of that. Now on this pocket, coming back to it, I almost forgot to tell you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch this down on either side. Let me get this out of the way so you can see that. I just want to baste it down because you see that plastic makes it want to curl. So no problem. We're just going to sew on either side of that just to keep it down. It's not moving around. Cool. And of course I'll repeat that for the other side, but it keeps it, it, it maintains it, keeps it so that it's, it's behaving when we're sewing. Now the other thing that you're going to want to do is for the outside of the pocket, of the bag, you're going to want to have two pieces of fabric. Now this one, what I've done is I've taken it and I have done like a fill pattern on the outside of it. Now I don't have anything but just a lightweight stabilizer on the back and you can see that gives that that fabric some dimension. It gives it stiffness to hold the shape of the bag with, and it's very lightweight. So it's a great way to use your fill patterns to create the uh, some stitching on there and the dense stitching kind of makes the fabric have some body without bulk and weight. What's really cool, I was really in, excited about this, is I went to the Artspira app where you do your printing and I was kind of looking around and what I found is I found a great um, free patterns for the Stellaire. I just was messing around, I went down to the bottom, now I can't guarantee they'll still be there, but the I pulled up the one design and it was a great uh, edge to edge quilting pattern and that's what I stitched on this piece of fabric. Now I take this, this is what's going to be behind the pocket. Pocket's going to go right on there. Of course I'm going to take this out of the hoop and trim it so that it has a half inch seam all the way around. So that bag body piece, my pocket, those are all ready to go. But what I'm also going to need is a couple other little things. I'm going to need to prepare my strap. So I take the strap and what it is is a two inch wide piece of fabric and I fold it in half and I fold both of the insides in just like that and I stitch it on both sides to create my strap. Now from the end of the strap I'm going to cut off a small section and I'm going to insert it around my D-ring. And what that's going to do, that's going to give me a place to attach my handle. I always like to attach my handle separately to a D-ring in case something happens to the handle, I can all, the strap, I can always take it off and change it. So that's that. Like I said, instructions are in your handout. Now let's talk about this zipper because we're going to want to prepare it special. Oh my gosh, here it is. Special for this. Now, what I want to have is, where is my bag? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. What I want to show you is, on the top of the bag, I have two little zipper tabs on either side. And that helps the zipper uh, fit right on the top of the bag and it doesn't have like a dimple on the side. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. What I'm going to do, I have an extra long zipper. You know, you can buy zippers. <laughs> There's not much more money to get a longer zipper in case you need it. So I'm going to take a longer zipper and I'm going to cut it down. What I want is I want this zipper to fit and be exactly six and a half inches because my bag is seven and I want a little bit of room on either side and I'm going to show you that during the construction but I want the zipper, the zipper to be six and a half inches long from this edge to this edge. Basically what I do is I take my little zipper tab, fold it in half just like that strap, fold it in half again and I'm going to want to put it over here on this end and close that off. So after putting this one on, cut off the end then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out six and a half inches. Take this aside. And now I'm going to sew and close this end of the zipper. Now don't forget, pull your zipper pull into the middle because you don't want to cut it off when you cut off the rest of the zipper. Ask me how I know. 
So I'm going to take it just like that, put it on in, and I'm going to start to sew. I'm using the Ultra T foot because it's going to really glide over the top of this, of this zipper bulk. Now, oh, important thing. If you are using a bigger zipper, where's my bigger zipper? Oh, here's my bigger zipper. If you are using a bigger zipper, which is great, it's a great purse zipper, this is very large teeth. So what you want to do is you want to sew up to here and then start sewing up again on here. But this is a small dress zipper and it's just fine to sew over the teeth. Just be a little slow and careful. So I'm going to sew on up. When I get close, I have the pivot feature engaged. I'm going to stop with that needle down, put the other part of the zipper tape in, Close it down like that. Make sure everything's nice and flat. And I'm just going to sew across this to hold this raw edge, open edge of the zipper in place. The zipper tabs are a little bit longer because why? Well, it's easier to control when they're a little bit bigger. And the zipper should close nicely. And it's a little bit crooked. That's okay because it's all going to be closed in the bag. So now what I need to do is I need to get my bag constructed. And here's what I did. I went to the scan and cut and I found a cool scan and cut shape and I created a design for the one side. And well, I'll talk to you about that when I get back. I have another one started and we'll get this bag constructed. And I think you'll see it's pretty easy and it's a pretty special little gift. I'll see you soon. Welcome back. So I have two bags going because <laughs> they're like potato chips. You can't make just one. So this one's a little bit farther on in the construction and I want to show you how you put this bag together. So just to review, I printed the picture. I, I put the lining for the pocket on the back of it and sewed it on down. And so that is ready. This is the lining for this little bag. And I did make a pocket out of fabric on this one. So that is ready to go. Here's my strap completed. And I put a couple little clips on either side of the strap. And I just sewed those on. Remember, you can always change your strap out if you want to. And <laughs> it, it can change the look of the bag. And if the strap gets nasty, you can change it out. So this one's in process. What I did is I made for the one side of the bag a really cool embroidery. Now, this embroidery was nothing that I had built into my machine. These shapes, and I, I think you could admit they're pretty cool. These are cutting shapes from the scan and cut. So basically, this adventure and the word family, these shapes came over and I used my design center to create them to be an embroidery. So basically, you're using my connection, which connects the Stell Air to the Scan and Cut. This is a cutting file and it was sent over through my design into my design center and I just added a fill on the inside and I just did it stitching around the outside edge. Now here's what's cool. The, the, the cutting files that come over from the scan and cut are really beautiful, perfectly digitized, perfectly ready for digi digitizing, right? So the machine does a great job. The word family, also in the scan and cut, sent that over from with my connection and brought it in, put a triple stitch on that and just laid it right on the top. I did them separately because I wanted the one to set right on top of the other. Pretty cool, right? So this embroidery wasn't anything I had before. It's something that came from the shapes and the scanning cut. Now I've used my design center. Oh my gosh. I love that option to create my own designs. But now with the scanning cut, I have tons more perfectly beautiful shapes to bring in. And it's really just touch, touch, touch. And I have an embroidery. So now I have that. I've used the printer to print the pocket for the other size. Pretty customizable, right? So now let's put this together. Now, what I have is I have a, I actually, this is an optional foot for the uh, Stellaire. This is a narrow zipper foot. I'm gonna take off the Ultra T foot. Yes, there's a zipper foot that comes with the Stellaire, but I do like this narrow one. You can also get it with a Teflon sole if you wanna sew on top of, if you wanna sew on top of vinyl or anything like that. So there, I like that narrow zipper foot. So now let's look at the construction of the bag. Basically what I've done is these are the two 
outside parts of the of the bag the pocket will be going right here now I've done the I have <laughs> put in a fill instructions are in your handout that's to the 5 by 7 fill and it, it it adds stiffness to this fabric without adding a lot of bulk and this embroidery naturally does that onto that side these are my two little uh, where I'm going to attach the strap and I've put them up by the zipper but you could just as easily put them on the side in fact I did that let me grab it I did that in this bag right here so you could just as easily put them on the side but I like them up here because it just I just it looks good I think so now this zipper has been basted in what I did you can see just the just the um <laughs> stabilizer on the back lightweight stabilizer works great what I did on this side is I put the zipper and I put it in I know it's hard to see because it's black on black but I put it about a quarter inch in from that raw edge and I just basted it in along the edge all the way through those zipper tapes what's important is this is where my seam is going to be at one half inch notice that the zipper is well inside of that because I want to be able to stitch up to here and have that have that um, zipper tab to be well inside that gives you that cool rounded edge why did I make the seam about a half an inch well it gives me more traction if I didn't have fabric here I wouldn't have fabric to be able to be caught by those feed dogs and feed evenly through so I'm just going to baste it on either side and then what I have is I have my bag fronts they're my bag fronts and they're just basted in when I stitch them I'm going to stitch them really much closer to the zipper but for now everything's under control now what you're going to do is you're going to put the lining in so let's start on this side we'll put the lining on now if you have a little card pocket what you want to make sure is the top of the card pocket <laughs> is going to the top of the bag because well it's just hard to use the other way <laughs> So now this lining is going to go on the back of this piece so basically I'm going to turn the lining right sides together that's how it's going to go and just bring that top under and out of the way and you're going to fold it down and you're going to sandwich that zipper in between the lining and the outside bag of the body pretty simple when you just kind of look at it and then you can always check yourself and open it up to see to see <laughs> open it up to see if you've done it right now I'm going to sew it on this side using that narrow zipper foot and I'm just going to sew on the inside of where I stitched before you can always pull that zipper pull a little bit out of the way but the beautiful thing is that that this narrow zipper foot it really lets you get in there close and you generally don't have to mess around with that zipper pull too much so we're going to come from one side to the other just on the inside of that previous stitching and you're going to thank me with that half inch seam it's a little thick right there where I have the tab for the strap a little bit slow over that area now let's see what I did so let's pull it on out and check it out and it looks pretty good there's the lining on this side I did put the pocket correctly and I'm going to repeat that for the other side what you can do is you can come in and if you want to stitch this down you absolutely can but you're going to want to keep it inside of where this tab area why well let's see what how this tab works and I'm going to try to pull it up so that you can see and there's a really big picture in your handout as well so what's going to happen once we get the other side on is we're going to sew this seam together we're going to pull the zipper tab out of the way and we're going to want to sew the seam from here and here and not catch that zipper tab in the middle so I'm going to take it when I get the other side on and just sew down here pulling those linings out of the way 
what that does is that means that your lining isn't going to get caught in that side edge and because that zipper tab is in just a little bit well it's going to be a perfect little folded edge corner. So let me get my other lining on. What I'm going to do is we're going to come on back and I'm going to show you exactly how to sew that side and our bag is going to be done. I'll see you in just a bit. Okay so I did a little bit of stuff. All I really did is I sewed the other lining piece on and what I'm going to do now is base that pocket onto the one side. Remember what I did is I did some basic fill stitching on this one area. It's really not going to be seen until you look in the pocket but what it does it gives the, the bag some body and using the plastic on the photograph also gives the bag some body too and it's super lightweight so you can load it up with your phone. Now Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to base the other side and show you. <laughs> this doesn't look like it's going to be a bag, does it? But it's pretty easy. So let's get to finishing it up. So basically what I'm going to have is, I'm going to pull the pocket out of the way. I have the two fronts and I have the two linings. I did top stitch in between the two tabs because I want to really be able to get into this area right here. I'm going to pull the lining of the pocket side out of the way and I really want to base this pocket down. So like I said, it doesn't move. I have it pretty close to the top of the bag and I have the Ultra T foot on so it's going to glide right over the top of this plastic. Otherwise, your foot would kind of stick. So I'm going to get everything out of the way and just sew down right along this edge of the photograph. That not only puts it down to the body of the bag, but it gives me a stitching line because I really don't want to have any of the white area on the side of the photograph show. Now in the instructions I tell you to make this photograph seven by four and a half, but basically you could make it a little bit larger and that way you wouldn't have to be so careful about that white area on the side. And there's plenty of room when you, when you print it out to do that. Now if you have a much larger phone, just make your bag a little bit larger. All right, so there is my pocket based it on. Now let's do this part on the side and I decided how to show you is I'm just going to take this front and fold it back and try to show you the side over here. What we really want to do is, and like I said there's a picture in the handout, is pull that tab out of the way and I hope you can see what I want to do is I want to sew this part of the side of the bag to this part right here. So I'm just going to manipulate this seam up and out of the way and I'm going to put those two parts together. Now it's a half inch seam but what I can do is I can find where those two sides are coming together. This is actually the fussiest part of the bag. I am going to put a pin right in here and I'm going to put it under my foot now, here's what's really cool. Pull everything over to the side. I know where my side seam is because I know where that area needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage my guide light and I'm going to move it over so it's right where my stitching line is going to be. So I can see right where that needs to be. The other thing I need to do is bring everything up and out of the way and put my needle down right where it's right where that begins. I'd lower the pressure foot, bring it on down, and like I said, this is the fussiest part. You could use that narrow zipper foot if you felt like you needed to, to get right on in there. Take out my pin. And I'm going to make sure that guide light is coming straight on and I've sewn and I'm going to be right inside of where that line is. And I can see that my stitching is right along just on the inside of that one line that I did. So it starts right on up here and you can kind of see, let me see if I can open it up so that you can see just temporarily, that that zipper pull 
zipper tab rather is right there and you see how the fabric comes around it and allows it to sit really really nice well I'm going to sew the other side and then basically all you do to finish is you come on and you lay your linings out flat you start right up here exactly where you started and you start here but as you go down as you come down to the bottom of the bag you're going to get a little bit wider on the bottom go from maybe a half inch to maybe five eighths of an inch and then sew across here not very far and stop so that you have an opening to turn the bag right side out I leave this opening just a little bit larger because when you turn the bag right side out, the plastic wants to crinkle a little bit. It doesn't hurt it, but you just want to have a bigger opening so that you're not fighting with it. So the fussiest part is making sure you get that side put exactly where you want, then finish up the lining. So across the bottom, all the instructions are in your hand bound, step by step. Now, just for fun, I had, was on my browser and I was finishing up your handout. Just a fun, I guess, side. And it said, do you want to try AI? You know, that artificial intelligence. Well, I did it. I asked it to write the instructions for the bag. So it did. <laughs> and I put them just for fun in the back of your handout. So you might want to go see and check that out. I think my job is still safe. <laughs> I did four pages on how to do it. It did it in 10 steps. I don't think that's efficient. So check that out with the handout. Go ahead, take a bunch of selfies. Make yourself a really cool bag because, oh my gosh, with the connection of the Stellaire to the Scan and Cut to create whatever design you want and printing your own photos, I'm telling you, you finish one of these bags, you give it to them, they might use it all the time. And I think, I think you have a great gift. Thanks for watching me today. I'm going to let George tell you a little bit more about the connection about all three of these machines because the trifecta of creativity, well, it's pretty awesome. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. And so let's go over the special offer we have on the Brother Stellaire series. So we have the XJ2, which is their combination sewing and embroidery and the XE2, which is dedicated embroidery. They both share the same embroidery features, which is a large nine and a half by 14 inch embroidery area with over 780 built-in embroidery designs. And of them, over a hundred of them are Disney. It also has over 30 fonts and large, beautiful monograms. And with the fonts, you can edit and all kinds of arrangements. You can arc, you can array, you can even cut and paste and kern it in some custom ways. Speaking of customization, you can take a design and do an automatic applique around it. And with the matrix copy, you can copy this very quickly to make patches and if we had the scan and cut, we can actually send it to the scan and cut, cut out those patches, and then embroider them beautifully. A an additional advanced technology is a new two-point laser positioning. I can take something like a name and position it on perfectly on a line. I can use it to do multiple hoopings and, and match them perfectly. I can even use it for edge-to-edge -edge quilting. Now, Part of what the Stellaire series offers is a special relationship with the Scan and Cut. They, they actually can marry together so I can send an applique design right from my machine and it will cut it out perfectly for beautiful applique. But better yet, I can send a design from my Scan and Cut and turn it into embroidery. It also unlocks a new feature where I can choose one of the colors of my design, whether if it's a, a built-in design, I can choose that and turn it into applique. But let's take that heart that I sent over. I turn it into embroidery. I select the color and now it's applique. Now let's bring over the third part of the piece. I wanna uh, create my own fabric and I can do that with print moda. I took an image of a rose 
and I arranged it just in a, in a beautiful kaleidoscope of color. And I printed that fabric and placed it on, uh, in the Scan and Cut. I took my design I created on the stale layer from the Scan and Cut, sent it over to the Scan and Cut, cut it out, and I have one complete embroidery design created with that trifecta of creativity. Now the XJ2 also is a sewing machine and it has a large 11.25 inch opening, beautiful lighting. It has 760 built-in stitches from quilting stitches to applique to utility. It even has automatic stippling and some beautiful decorative stitches that are very, very wide. It also has an automatic quarter inch feature which moves the needle over a quarter inch from the foot and you can use the laser guidance it has on there so you can just do some beautiful piecing. It also has amazing fabric control with an automatic fabric sensor and this gives you the ability to sense multiple layers like in denim or if I want to sew on some sheer fabric like this Trico, I can do that beautifully or even working with elastics. It handles the fabric beautifully. If it's even more extreme, we can add the digital dual feed. This is a belt driven uh, feed system that gives perfect contact on the fabric. And so you see here with this uh, marine vinyl, there's no slippage. I also can use it with such things as minky, which is hard to sew with, and of course, quilting. So let's talk about the special we have on the Stellaire XJ2. This is the combination sewing and embroidery machine. This has a, a manufacturer suggested list price of $12,999.99 and it's on sale for $9,999.99. We have interest-free payments, plus we're offering free shipping across the country. But wait, we have a special bonus. We're gonna include that Print Moda Studio, that fabric printer by Brother, that has a retail value of $1,499, and that's included free for a limited time. Now, let's say we want the ultimate package, the trifecta of creativity. That's when we add the Scan and Cut. So you add the Scan and Cut, now we have all three items, and we have that on sale for $10,749.98. We have interest-free payments and free shipping across the country. But wait, this is for a limited time. Now, if I want uh, just the dedicated embroidery, let's say you already have a sewing machine and you want the XE2, which is dedicated embroidery, this has a manufacturer suggested retail price of $9,999.99. We have it on sale for $7,499.99. We're offering interest-free payments as well as free shipping across the country. And of course, we're going to include that bonus, the Print Moda Studio, free with the purchase. And that has a regular retail price of $1,499. But let's make it the ultimate, the trifecta of creativity. You will get the scan and cut added with that. And that total package for all three items is $8,249.98. And we do also have interest-free payments on that as well and free shipping. But don't wait, this is a limited time offer. Click on the link to order. You can email us at customer service at moores-so.com or give us a call at 1-800-865-9667.